Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about FNN promos since we have to say goodbye to them. Were they actually worth the money? And the answer is no, they definitely were not most of the time. Now there are some exceptions, like as we see from this page, the Ranger is $35, Rancor is $10, Reanimate is $27, Reman is $20, Reliquary Tower is 8. But for the most part, these are older promos like Fire Blast or Forbid that are much higher in price. Now, A4 Hub is a solid $4. So if you paid your $5 entry fee and you finished in the top 8 and your store was legitimate and not selling the promos, all assumptions, of course, you would get break even value, right? assuming no price support. And there has been a trend, at least in my local area, where the price support has been pretty bad. Uh, when turnout is low, store owners kind of get greedier and they don't give as many good prizes. There's no more free pizza or soda or anything like that anymore. Next, we are going to take a look at the silence is pretty good at over 10. Ghostly Prison was good at nine. Goblin Bombardment, uh, interesting, definitely EDH at 13. Gitaxin Probe, the famous Gitaxin Probe is $6. And Sakura Tribe Elder is 10. What pattern you see from these kind of pricey cards are not, they're EDH cards, right? If you have an EDH common and you make it a foil or EDH uncommon, then yes, you will get a crazy price on it. Why make the promos one of the reasons people kept complaining about the promos was they truly were bad. And the reason they were bad was standard cards that they were based off were not great. If standard is weak, why don't they just pick some good EDH cards and then everyone's happy, right? Wouldn't the casual player be happy? Hey, I can win this EDH card or I can trade for the EDH card. But the majority of promos, recent promos, I remember Frostwalker, 45 cents. Uh, which of these are recent? Uh, a lot of these promos are just, oh, the spare at 64 cents, which is good. Visions at $4. It doesn't have to be a very pricey card. And that's the key here. Banisher Priest, I remember that one at 78 cents. I believe that's the one with the very beautiful artwork. But anyway, Brainstorm is $53. You have the, oh, Goblin War Chief 2016 is only 81, 81 cents. I didn't realize they printed it twice. That's probably a oddity, actually. Sin Collector, I remember that well from Dragon Maze, 70 cents. Even older ones like Slice and Dice from Onslaught or Hordling Outburst, which is recent. Grizzly Savage, recent. Oh, well, a lot of these are incredibly interesting prices because I feel like they are completely dependent on EDH playability at this point in time. Cable Coffers is a $26 card. Would be great. I mean, if you wanted to get casual, more friendly people, then give better promos or give everyone a promo. The, the solution is not to get rid of promos. It's just to give more of them, right? A promo costs what? Five cents to print? maybe less, and you're going to ship the stuff off to the store anyway in that envelope in the manila amp. Like, I always kind of wonder, why is, do they ship it in a manila envelope? Can't they afford like better packaging? But no, it's just a manila, it's a bubbler. It's a bubbler. All right, next we'll look at the call of the bloodline. Yeah, that's a recent one, 50 cents. And is it charm? Recent one. Um... What else do we have here? Oh, Spike Feeders above 10. That's a good one. Stoke the Flames used to be really expensive. It was a $5 uncommon non-foil. And the only way I could get my fourth copy was I had to trade for a foil copy because there was no one who wanted me to trade me a regular copy. Cable Coffers is good. Cabal. Oh, not Cable. Cabal. Yep. Okay. Chainer's Edict. Also very good. But yeah, a lot of judges familiar. RTR promos were just pretty much bad uh, from what I'm remembering now. 
Jackal Pup is a beautiful one. Scepter is good at seven. Impost is well, that's an interesting one, nine, but I think it's just because it's so old. And we have apparently we've we've had tokens before. Human wolf token was one. I assume that was Innistrad. Double sided, right? Yeah, a lot of these are not can not really great cards, like they're just meh, but EDH makes it valuable. Like Counterspell, everyone can buy a Counterspell for a dollar, but maybe you want the pimp version of it. Lightning Greaves is a good one. Uh, the Disenchant is $12. That's quite good. Merfolks are always good. Magma Jet, surprisingly, at $3. Elf, like here, this is a pretty good case example. Land Wharf Elves is $13.50. Okay, who's that hurting, right? Like, is that hurting the Land Wharf Elves collectors, right? Who have collected thousands of these. No, just pick a card. It could be like uh, Soul Sisters, right? What was that one? Either of the Soul Sisters. And then make it foil and then give it as a promo. And there will be high demand and just give it to everyone. Just give it to everybody. If you wanted it to be casual and you want more people to go, then instead of making people pay a play for the top eight, just give, a pro give one promo to everyone and then have maybe the tokens be the additional thing that more competitive players play at and then all the players can come go home happy and they got the edh card they wanted I, that's the concept i i don't understand printing cards should not cost that much money for wizard of the coast and, uh, and they don't even need to use new artwork they don't need to commission that they just use plop down the same artwork and i think they would be fine elves of deep shadow that's another great one right there's not anyone a foil elves of deep shadow is going to offend, right? Like, because the card is already cheap, but hey, people need foils. There are plenty of commons and uncommons that a foil copy would be really, really good and not affect the marketplace at all. Because it, in some cases, doesn't even exist. So, Mother Ruins, uh, that's a good one. Unlicensed Disintegration, oh, that's a recent one, so that's not bad. Wall of Roots, Wall of Omens, Blossoms, <laughs> War Leaders Helix. I remember that one. Tormented Hero. Like the recent ones have been incredibly bad. Ultimate Price. They have just been very, very bad. And I think they've been bad to discourage players from playing the game competitively. I mean, the whole point of that article and getting rid of them was competitive players should not go to FNM. Yeah, that's the point, right? Casual players, it should be more of a social event. And if that's the case, that's okay. They have data. They're not dummies, right? They, I'm sure they have a whole marketing team and whole data analytical team. The guy who's the CEO now is coming to Microsoft. I'm sure he's data-driven. And he found results that said, oh, f and should be for socializing and hanging out and casual players because that's how we make the most money. Now, here's the difference, right? What is good for Wizard of Coast is not always good for you if you're a certain player group. If you're a FNM grinder, I, I really use that term kind of loosely, or you're a pro PTQ grinder, or you grind whatever you're grinding, maybe this news is bad for you um, because it hits your EV slightly. But if you are a casual player, maybe you're shy, maybe... You do need an environment which is more friendly and people are playing weird decks that you can win against. And maybe it's the type of person who buys a tool builder's kit and builds a deck and can win a few games from it. That's not bad either. That's not bad. And the data supports that, then the FNM promo should still be given out in my opinion, but everyone should get one. It does not cost very much to give everyone them. I know what you're saying with all oh, store owners might be incentivized to sell them. Yes, but given the fact that many of them are not worth any money, it's not worth it, right? It's just not worth the time to even list it out. And especially if you're that one store in TCG player with like 200 copies of a card on sale the day it comes out. Yeah, not worth it at all. Anyway, that is my opinions. My opinions is give new players more promos, not less. Or at least give them the option to pick between the token or the promo, right? And give stores more. The store 
is helping Wizards of the Coast. It's a beneficial relationship, but the store has... A lot of you have said, why can't they do Saturday and Sunday and stuff? There's overhead, right? They got to pay an employee to be there. And if the employee is not there selling stuff, then they have to manage the event. Most employees cannot do both because it's hard for employees, like, at least in my experience at my local game stores, at the pre-release nights when there's a lot of people, there's at least four people in the store managing it. There's one who does sales, there's one who's doing the timer and putting the names and getting the slips. There's another one who generally is the judge, like maybe a judge, uh, and then he's doing talking to the judge. And there's another one that does the uh, casual draft. So when you have 100 people events, you have a lot of people, and those people only get paid. They're not working for free. Um, so... My gut feeling is they're putting a lot of pressure on these stores to hold more standard events. And, you know, there's air conditioning in Houston is probably very expensive. I know it's expensive for me. Uh, the employee salary is very expensive. Having Even having the lights on, right? And some places in Williamsburg, they don't want you to be open after a certain time of night because they consider it dangerous. Uh, and, and the police used to go by that store quite a bit and ask, what's going on? Why is the lights on? It's 4 a.m. at night. <laughs> right? Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.